Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Imagine a situation where you're cruising on the highway. You notice that your car starts to give you trouble. You wonder if it's because there's very little fuel and look at the fuel gauge. To your dismay, the gauge doesn't seem to function properly. You'll end up in a trouble situation where having no idea of how much fuel is left and whether you should refill your vehicle or not. Since the entire consumer market trend is now shifting towards electric vehicles, what if the same situation happens? You look at the battery indicator and your vehicle does not indicate any sign of charging or remaining distance. Technically, the remaining distance is the battery level, which plays an important role when it comes to electric vehicles. The battery capacity of an electric vehicle can be explained more with the term called SOC or state of charge. SOC can be defined as the remaining level of the charge of a battery. It is usually expressed as a percentage. A fully charged battery is said to be at a 100% state of charge and fully discharged is said to be at 0%. Mathematically, SOC can be represented as the remaining capacity of the battery. Imagine that SOC is something like the fuel gauges on the dashboard that reports whether the tank is full or empty. In electric vehicles, SOC is used to determine the range of the vehicle, but this is different in hybrid electric vehicles. Here, the SOC determines when the engine should be switched on and off, since in hybrid electric vehicles, the engines share the overall power required by the vehicle. So when the battery is low on charge, the engine of the car is used to drive the car and also charge the battery. When it comes to the internal state of the battery inside a vehicle, there are no such sensors or instruments to provide an accurate value of the remaining voltage level. On this context, we say the SOC estimation, not SOC measurement. Due to this cause, we must somehow combine voltage, current temperature, and knowledge of cell model to estimate SOC. When we are filling a glass with water continuously, there will be a lot of water ripples and disturbances in the liquid. We cannot estimate the correct level of water at this time. Similarly, in a battery, while charging and discharging, many voltage ripples occur and we cannot estimate the level of charge accurately. There are different methods to do the estimation, out of which the most simple method is open circuit voltage method or OCV. This method is also not precise as load current pulls the voltage down during discharge. The major challenge in this method is the flat discharge voltage curve in the characteristic voltage. Ripples or any agitation during previous charging or discharging can also result in a further error in the estimation. Each battery chemistry delivers its own unique discharge characteristic. The discharge voltage curves of lithium manganese, lithium phosphate and NMC are very flat and 80% of the stored energy remains in the flat voltage profile. While this characteristic is desirable as an energy source, it presents a challenge for voltage-based fuel gauging as it only indicates full charge and low charge and the important middle part cannot be estimated correctly. It's the same case where the gasometer on the dashboard says it's full when the battery is actually only at around 90%. But when it says it's empty, it's actually around 16% state of charge. This is another major challenge where the manufacturer does not allow deep discharge of the battery. SOC error of battery can be well related to us in another example where there's a sudden switch off of your mobile phone after 10% or 5% of charge remaining. There are also other methods which can give more accurate estimation results than OCV. Coulomb counting or current integration method, Kalman filtering by using integrated circuits, DP neural network, RBF neural network, per unit system, and EKF combination, and fussy neural network. They can give more accurate results than OCV. But as the method becomes more complex, more engineering time is required to develop and validate the better methods. Well, that's all for this video, guys. I hope you found this interesting and I'll see you again in the next one. Until then, bye.